In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Repent and believe in the Gospel. It's Lenten Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a selection of Don Bosco. Come back to the Lord with all your heart. Stay tuned. Come back to me with all your heart. Don't let fear keep us apart. It is Friday, the 23rd of February, 2024. First week of Lent and participating in the proclamation of the Word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Major Francis Daka, who celebrates his 60th birthday from Lusaka, Zambia, takes for us the first reading. Caroline Major from Nairobi, Kenya, Celebrating her birthday today, text for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Alex Murage from Nyeri Archdiocese in Kenya. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, we pray, may be so conformed to the Paschal observances that the bodily discipline now solemnly begun may bear fruit in the souls of all. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked and not rather that he should turn from his way and leave. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 21 to 28. Thus says the Lord God, If a wicked man turns away from all his sins which he has committed and keeps all my statutes and does what is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. None of the transgressions which he has committed shall be remembered against him. For the righteousness which he has done, he shall live. A violent pleasure in the death of the wicked, says the Lord God, and not rather that he should turn from his way and live. But when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and does the same abominable things that the wicked man does, shall he live. None of the righteous deeds which he has done shall be remembered. For the treachery of which he has guilty and the sin he has committed, he shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity, he shall die for it. For the iniquity he has committed, he shall die. Again, when a wicked man turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is lawful and right, he shall save his life, because he considered and turned away from all the transgressions which he has committed. He shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 130, 1-2. 3 to 4, 5 to 7a, 7bc to 8. Response is taken from Psalm 130 verse 3. And the response is, If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? Out of the depths I cry to you. Oh Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Oh, let your ears be attentive. 
to the sound of my pleading. If you are assured my iniquities, Lord, who could stand? If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? What with you is found forgiveness that you may be revealed. If you are not should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? I long for you, O Lord, my soul My soul hopes in the Lord more than watchmen for daybreak, more than watchmen for daybreak. Let Israel hope for the Lord. If you are not sure, mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? For with the Lord there is mercy, in him is plenty for redemption. It is he who redeemed Israel from all its iniquities. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? Gospel Acclamation, Ezekiel 18, verse 31. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed, says the Lord, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 20 to 26. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you be put in prison. Truly, I say to you, you'll never get out until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we have come to a very important lesson in our Lenten observance. God wants our holiness. That is exactly the aim of Lent. He wants our transformation. Our God is not a sadist. 
It doesn't take pleasure in your wretchedness. It doesn't take pleasure in our wickedness. No, it takes pleasure in righteousness. That is exactly what we hear in the word of God for today. Ezekiel is in exile in Babylon with the people of Israel. And while the people were there, they started saying, we are suffering because God is very happy to punish us even for the sins of our fathers. And so there was this common saying, our fathers ate sour grapes and our teeth are set on edge. We are suffering not because of our own sins, but because somehow the sins of those who made wrong alliances are on us. And that's why we are suffering here in exile. God is happy to see us die. No, sorry. Not my God, not our God. Our God doesn't take pleasure in the death of anybody. That is why the first reading says, Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked? Says the Lord God. And not rather that he should turn from his way and live. You should turn from your ways and live. I should turn from my bad ways and live. God is not at all a sadist. He doesn't want any one of us to perish. He wants us to see life. Because he wants us to see life, he wishes us well. So when you see things not going right in your life and you try to apply for a job here and there and nothing is coming out, you go for an interview and somehow you don't receive any positive response and start blaming the past for this or your fathers or your grandmothers and your great-grandmothers. First of all, sit down. And reflect, look at yourself and say, am I contributing something to this? Have I contributed something to this? We are taking away responsibility from ourselves. That is why it's very difficult for us to transform. We are blaming the past. I am blaming my family for a curse. When I go for interview and I don't get a job, I go with a very solemn face. I go without confidence in that interview and I don't get a job. I start blaming my forefathers. Turn from your ways. Start taking up responsibility and start realizing that you have a role to play in whatever is happening in your life. When you start realizing like that, then God will start working in your life. He will use you. After acknowledging there is something that you're not doing right that is causing your current predicament, there is a way of dealing with this. Sit down, reflect, Because the period of Lent is just about that. It is there to make us know where we have gone wrong, turn from our ways, and start doing the will of God in our lives. The gospel passage of today tells us how we are to do that. We must make sure that our righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees and scribes. And so in relating to one another, We are not going to limit ourselves to the minimum requirements of the law. When I am talking to somebody, I must use a language that I don't regret using afterwards. We are very aggressive when it comes to dealing with one another. We may have very good intentions in the language that we use, but whatever intention you have, don't demean anybody. Don't insult anybody. Don't think that your status can make you look at others as though they were lesser beings. They are not lesser beings. They are human beings like you and they deserve respect. You have heard what it was said, you shall not kill and whoever kills shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother shall be liable to the council and whoever says you fool shall be liable to the hell of fire. You can only say you fool to somebody you think is of a low standard compared to yours. You cannot tell your boss you fool. 
Because you know, this is my boss and he is of a certain standing in society. Now, please treat everyone as your boss from now on. At least during this period of Lent, let us call each other boss. Boss. I found a beggar the other day here in Rome outside the supermarket and I greeted him. I said, my boss, how are you doing? He smiled and re-echoed the words, my boss? How can this man call me my boss when he's the one giving me help? Yes, that's my boss. That's my employer. He's the one who has employed me in the company of charity, in the company of goodness, in the company of showing my generosity. That's my employer. And I do my work with all respect because that's my employer. And I want us to look at each other this way. When we see a boss in another person, we are going to know how to treat each other. And we are going indeed to experience that transformative power of God's word. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Friday to you. Thanks be to God. Lord.